Hello everyone, I'm David Williams at Illinois Institute of Technology. Today's August 2nd, 2016, and I'd like to give you an overview of some research that I'm doing with David Greenblatt at Technion uh, in Haifa, Israel. We're interested in controlling the forces uh, that are acting on pitching airfoils, and uh, this will be an overview. If you'd like to have more details about this work, you can find it in AIAA paper 2016-4240. So the motivation behind this work is that we'd like to be able to control forces and moments that are acting on airfoils when they're in a time-varying flow. There are many examples of machines whose performance is limited by the formation of dynamic stall vortices and other effects. Examples include uh, the vertical axis wind turbine and helicopter rotors. These uh, machines have blades that experience very large angles of attack variations and they occur very rapidly. So here's an example of uh, what happens to a blade that's pitching. This is a plot of the lift coefficient versus the angle of attack. The um, gray line shows the standard lift coefficient that people think of that uh, is, is what you find with steady state behavior. But when the airfoil is pitching around and moving, in reality, you get so-called dynamic hysteresis loops as part of it. These different colored loops correspond to different pitching rates and different pitching amplitudes. But the point is that you can see that these uh, deviations from the steady state curve are quite large. And we need to be able to at least know what they are. And what we would like to do is with active flow control, reduce the size of those hysteresis loops. And we would do that using a closed loop control system, a system that uses uh, a feed forward uh, loop as shown here, and uh, possibly a feedback loop shown on the bottom. But at this stage, what we need are two models of the system. The first is called the plant model, G sub P, and that tells us how the lift is going to vary as we change the actuator, that is uh, our active flow control actuator acting on the blade. The second model that we need is G sub D, our disturbance model. And this tells us how the lift coefficient changes when the blade itself is pitching uh, dynamically. So we, once we have those two models, then we can design a controller for it. The experiments are being done at uh, Technion under the guidance of Professor David Gl Greenblatt, who's shown here by his wind tunnel. The model he's using is an NACA0018 airfoil, and he has a blowing jet type of actuation located in the leading edge of the wing, and it exits at about 5% cord. He can control the amplitude of that jet, and the amplitude is measured by this coefficient C sub mu. So we need to know how does the airfoil respond when we we vary uh, that forcing amplitude. The first thing we do is apply steady blowing and look at the wing's performance uh, when it pitches up slowly under steady conditions or when it's actually dynamically pitching. So again, this is the lift coefficient plot versus angle of attack. The dotted lines correspond to the steady state response at three different blowing levels and the solid lines correspond to the dynamic case where it's pitching between 11 degrees and 25 degrees. And um, <coughs> you can see the dynamic hysteresis response even with the uh, steady state actuation. And as the blowing level increases, the lift coefficient increases as well. So our first model uh, for the disturbance is with steady blowing how does, and with a certain blowing amplitude, C mu, how does, uh, uh, can we reproduce these dynamic hysteresis curves? And we do this with a modified version of the gaman krabrov model, which is a state space model that uses two time delays. Tau one is the relaxation time constant. Tau two is the actual time delay uh, multiplying uh, the pitch rate. And you see that we've added a C mu component uh, in this equation as well. So the details are, you can find in the paper, but you see uh, the comparison between the experiment and the model 
uh, in this plot here, and, and it does a reasonable job of reproducing the disturbance effects. So the next thing we need is a model that responds, uh, tells us how the lift responds to dynamic actuation, where the blowing jet is varying with time. And here's a plot of the lift coefficient versus phase angle uh, through one cycle of blowing. This uh, left plot corresponds to a fixed angle of attack at 11 degrees. And as the uh, forcing frequency increases, we go from the black curve, which is very sinusoidal in shape, to the red curve that's delayed in time and, and distorted. So those are the effects that we need to capture. So to do this, we came up with a new time delay model for the plant, um, which is very similar to uh, the gaman krabrov model, except instead of multiplying tau 2 by alpha dot, it's just a simple uh, time delay uh, in this static function y0. So if we use this model, then this is uh, how well it fits with the experimental data. Again, now we're plotting C mu against, uh, sorry, C L against C mu. And uh, the red curve is the model prediction. The black dotted line is the experimentally measured data. And you see for fixed angle of attack with the sinusoidal variation in C mu, we get a reasonably good fit to the data. So now we have our two models, G sub P and G sub D and we combine them together in a controller that's only going to use a feed-forward component, and that's this K uh, block here. The uh, feed-forward component is uh, made up of an inverted plant model multiplying the disturbance model, and it controls how the actuator will respond uh, to, to uh, uh, the incoming disturbances in order to maintain a constant lift coefficient value. We plug all of this into Simulink to make a prediction of how this system will perform, and this is the result that we get. We have uh, CL plotted against angle of attack. The black curve is the um, prediction for how the lift coefficient will behave when there is no active flow control, but when we turn our controller on, we're predicting that we will get this red curve response, which has greatly reduced the size of the hysteresis loop. The lower plot shows the lift coefficient uh, versus the uh, time on the horizontal axis. Again, the black line is without con flow control, and the red line shows the oscillations. And you can see that there's been a very significant, almost three times reduction in the amplitude of these lift fluctuations with this type of uh, control. Uh, to really test the model, we need to use a randomized uh, input, not just a sinusoidal motion. And so we created a quasi-random signal with four different frequencies, with different amplitudes, different phases uh, relative to each other. And now the wing is pitching between 7 degrees angle of attack and 29 degrees angle of attack. The blue line shows the behavior that we would expect to get with outflow control. The red line uh, shows the response we're expecting with flow control. And again, uh, there's a factor of three reduction in the fluctuation amplitude. The lower plot shows the time variation uh, uh, signal. So again, it's, it, it uh, looks like the controller is doing a good job of suppressing these, these oscillations. So uh, that's where we're at uh, with the uh, Simulink model predictions. The, uh, um, two time delayed models that we've obtained seem to be doing a good job, but now the challenge is to provide experimental verification. And the group at uh, Technion is working on this now, and uh, we hope to have an update for you in, in a few months. So thanks very much for your time.